Welcome back to Good Day. It's time for Mother Knows Best, and there's already some whispering going on over here. They are ready to talk about this next one. So there is an article out. Uh, Representative Jack Kingston from Georgia, he wants kids to learn early in life there's no such thing as a free lunch. So he's proposing that low-income children do some manual labor in exchange for their subsidized meals. His quote says, why don't you have the kids pay a dime, pay a nickel to instill in them that there is in fact no such thing as a free lunch or maybe sweep the floor of the cafeteria. Yes, I understand that would be an administrative <coughs> problem and I understand that it would probably lose you money, but think what we would gain as a society in getting people, getting the myth out of their head that there's no such thing as a free lunch. He also said um, that, let's see, Kingston's plan, uh, people are saying, could obviously create some embarrassment for low-income children who would be sweeping the floors and such while the, the wealthier kids were out there playing at recess or whatever they're doing, doing normal kid activities, while the low-income children would supposedly be learning the lesson of hard work, then their wealthier peers would just be getting a free lunch from their parents, is what some of the people are saying. Mm -hmm. Now, they say um, back in 2011, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich said kind of a similar idea that they should fire school janitors and let the kids come in and work at the school instead of having the janitors do the work um, so that the, the, the kids would have pride in their schools. So I'm seeing some faces. Just go. Go for it. Well, I just wonder if the esteemed Mr. Gingrich ever had to have a free lunch at school. Mm, I don't you know, know I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't go there. But, you know, here's the thing. There's enough bullying in school exactly. already. What do we talk about all the time is Thank bullying. You. Our children are being bullied because they're different. I was one of those kids. We didn't have money for new clothes, so we went to Goodwill and we shopped. And I got teased about that when I was a kid mm -hmm. years ago. Right. You put a kid out there with a broom, oh, sweeping the hall, that kid's life is going to be miserable in school. Everybody's going to tease them. I think this is a horrible you, idea. You can't make school attendance compulsory and then say, oh, but if you can't pay for your lunch, you've got to work for it. Because first of all, the kids don't pay for the lunch. It's the parents. So you, the parents still aren't going to pay, and the kids are going to do the work. There is child, la there are child labor laws, mm. too, and you, I, I mean that just goes flies against them, which are federally mandated. And apparently, this law that they're talking about, or whatever, is also a federal. Would be a federal thing. I mean, I, I just can't believe the mindset of these men who are in office and who are making these type of decisions for our state, our country, because it is so insensitive. And you go back to the bullying, mm -hmm. because in my mind, all I could see is some of the other kids who do bully in school mm -hmm. dropping something and saying, now sweep mm -hmm. that up. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have to say, yeah. in terms of doing work, my daughter worked her way through college. I mean, she, but this but was optional. She didn't have to do it. She could have paid money, but she didn't have see, the money, that's, you know. That's through but college. But she could not mm -hmm. talk to that. That's exactly. totally different. And that's then, totally now, different. I think it'd be a great idea to have an optional, like a work study class that kids could choose to do and, you know, learn how to. For, lunch, for a free lunch? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Just as a class to learn because, <laughs> okay. because really we work ethic stinks in our country. I mean, okay. That, so, but you can't make it a connected to the, you do this class and then you get lunch. Right. Or, there's no connection there. You know. But see, here, I mean, here in our country, the mindset when it comes to taking care of people who have a need is at an all-time low. We do have the mindset that when it comes to taking care of those who have a need, that we don't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And biblically, the government should do it. The go well, the government, pushing it on yeah, the government. but then, you know, these are our kids. And if you want to implant something in these children, then what we should do is teach them to Get your education, and when you grow up, give back to the community. Absolutely. And it should be Put yourself in a position family. that you can give you back, pay it forward. So, I mean, that's something that we need to continue to, to instill in our children. Don't sit up there and tell them that if you want a sandwich, then you need to get on your knees and scrub up the next person's slops mm -hmm. that they've thrown on the floor. That's degrading, and mm -hmm. that's wrong. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. I need five minutes for those men. Five minutes. <laughs> we're going to be back in just a second. I'm going to try to calm them down. Yeah, <laughs> and then we're going to be back. Road I'm going to tell them, save trip. it for the yep. camera so you can hear what they have to say. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Good Day and Mother Knows Best. We're having a very heated conversation <coughs> about a Georgia representative who s suggested that instead of kids just getting this free lunch, that they should have to work for it in some way and suggested maybe sweeping the floors. And uh, so we're getting back to that topic, but 
I think, Bridget, we, you were talking when we left off, but what, what else do you all have to say about Well, I had an idea, mm -hmm. and everybody agreed with me. <laughs> I think that all of our elected <laughs> officials should have to clean the bathrooms and sweep the halls of the Senate office building and wherever mm -hmm. they're housed until they get the budget balanced. Mm -hmm. yeah. And go. then I think that would take care yeah. of worrying about kids having free meals. Mm -hmm. So that, think how much money that would save mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Newt Gingrich, that's what they said in the article as well, that he had talked about firing janitors in schools and letting the kids do the cleaning. Mm -hmm. This was back in 2011. In this article, they said that he suggested that to give them, to make them have pride in the school. But how do you think you could instill pride in the school and you know, for them to take care of the school, and you know, just recently in a, a school here, um, some yeah. kids vandalized the mm -hmm. school and put baby oil on the floors and ripped down pa posters. The school was late, delayed by two hours. So, how can you instill pride in your kids? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you don't have pride in yourself, you forget about the school. I mean, mm -hmm. that's you know, that's a moot point. But it comes from home. It really it comes from home, and mm -hmm. I know I know parents are stressed and busy and working, and you have fractured families. But that doesn't excuse, that doesn't take the, you know, the, the responsibility away. I mean, we still, as parents, have that responsibility to teach our kids pride in ourselves, pride in our families, pride in our churches, our schools, mm -hmm. where, you know, wherever mm -hmm. we are. We need to carry ourselves with dignity, and, and then, you know, that bleeds through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, everything that lessons are started at home, mm -hmm. and they're just in re reinforced at, at school. And I think a lot of times we as, well, I'm not going to say we as parents, but some parents, they expect for the teachers yes. and the youth pastors and, and for yeah. the, the preachers yeah, and everything else. to just do everything for them when mm -hmm. they go off to church and when they go off to school and that's really not their responsibility right. because it does start at home with leaders like this it's kind of disheartening because these yeah. are the people that's in the public's eye that's infecting our society with toxic mindsets like this and that's definitely not the case I understand that you want people to not have a gimme, gimme mindset. Mm -hmm. You want people to know that you should always want to work hard for everything that's given to you. But we should have the mindset that if someone helps me when I'm down, when I get myself on my I'm feet, gonna then I'm going to pay it forward and I'm going to help the next person and then I'm going to help the next person. Mm -hmm. That's the lesson that this leader should be teaching <laughs> that's what the what you should be teaching your kids if if he's so worried about this kid getting a free lunch then start instilling some programs in the school that's going to start teaching kids how to give back to mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. to others yeah. whether it's going out and helping you know shelters or helping other people that's in need and also starting programs that's going to help the parents if you're tired or if, if you're seeing that we're giving out a lot of free lunches start starting programs that's probably going to help these parents get off of the free lunch program yeah. so that we can help the budget and but then that's again still putting it on the government's hands you know i mean it's well you it's, work with the government come up with a solution that's why somebody not me voted to have you put in that office to do that <laughs> but don't you I think mean, that politicians it seems to me that that is what politicians are doing anymore they're dividing us hmm. they are exactly. really working at dividing us this party against this party and it's us against them and that's where we need to fight back and say, no, it's about us. We are one we're, country right. under exactly. God, and we're going to do this through love and compassion. Exactly. We're not going to do this through, through being parties. divided. Exactly. exactly. How would you teach your kids to not have um, a sense of entitlement or, you know, teach them that they do have to work hard in life to earn things? By doing it. I mean, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. get off your duff, you know, get away from the computer, get away from the TV. You know, clean your room. I mean, help out around the house. You know, it's, I know it sounds trite, mm -hmm. but you've got to start at the basics, you know, and it starts with personal responsibility. And yeah. doing it yourself as a parent mm -hmm. and leading by example. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just, and my kids always had to work to earn allowance, you know. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't just given allowance. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's all those things. It's modeling and expecting them to do it, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Setting a standard, you know. Yeah, exactly. Great words of advice. We'll be back in just a moment with more Mother Knows Best. Welcome back to Good Day and Mother Knows Best. We do want to announce that we have 
a good our three good day giveaway winners real quick before we get back sure. in our next topic Sonia Lady Herbalife that is her name on Facebook she has won one of the games Tiffany O'Shade and Alicia Lyons those three have won the dice game that we are giving away today on good day so stop by 1201 Stewart Avenue to pick that up during business hours our next topic here you know everyone has very busy lives nowadays and you know everyone has a different opinion on this but some might say you know can you just call before you come over they don't like people just to pop up unannounced because you know they're trying to get their house ready or they're doing dishes or who knows what's going on but what do you do if you have neighbors or little you know kids or whoever your family and they just come over unannounced all the time what do you do Oh, okay. nobody wants wait, to speak up. <laughs> Is there family members watching we don't want to talk about? I'll go. Okay. Well, yeah. I can tell you what not to do. Yes, let's hear it. Don't keep asking them not to call and then every time they still, I mean to call and then they still show up and you ask them to call next time and they still show up. You be nice and just hold it in mm -hmm. until you've had a really bad day and you're in Hello Kitty pajamas with wet hair and they show up <laughs> and you lose it on your front porch because it's a really bad time. That's what not to do. So that's why I'm hoping we can okay. get some advice here about what to do. Oh, that is funny. Well, I mean, it's, it's different if it's a one like that thing. I Are you know. picturing me in a Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, trying, I'm trying to think, recuperate here. They had feet on them, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably would not have answered the door if, if I was that I way. I would not you have, know. but we have respite that comes in. See, this is that we have respite that comes in for Charles two hours a day, mm. and that's my time to go take a hot bath and take a nap. And these people came in and insisted that his respite worker get us up because they were there. That is so insensitive. Mm. Oh, my. Yeah. Wow. Because I would I not have answered well, the door. I have to tell you, I don't, I don't know. Maybe so, but I don't know how to do that nicely. Well, I mean, I can tell you what I do too, and I don't know. How and see, to and that, that. that that puts the the worker in it, an awkward she, position. She was, she was. That puts Absolutely. her in an awkward position, and I would probably just tell her, "Don't answer the door." Yeah, we will from now on. Yeah. But at that time, she didn't. She didn't. Was know. this family or neighbor? It was family. I, I would, just, I would, I would yeah. tell her. I, first, I would tell them. Look, if it's got, I mean, but she has been. That's what you said. You mean the family? But see, y'all know I'm just kind of out there. Mm -hmm. I'm just look. You, you come, you're just gonna be wasting your gas because we're not gonna open the door. <laughs> I've tried to tell you before. This is the one nice. time I've tried to be nice, <laughs> but really, this is our time to get some rest. It's you know, it's a mm -hmm. full day. We have a mm -hmm. lot going on. I love you all, but I really need this rest. Right. So if you all could just let us know before time so that we can be rested and refreshed. So when you all come over, we can have a really good time and fellowship and just you know be able to sit down and chillax and chat but if you come over any other time then you know we're not going to be able to ha you know mm -hmm. have that, Which is exactly that time right, with you it. but yeah. if you come over any other time i'm going to give her instructions not to open the door you have been warned mm -hmm. <laughs> if you come during then the you're, you're asking to be offended <laughs> you are wanting to be offended and that's going to be nobody's fault but your own well they were offended, all right well they're they just going to have to be that's, offended that, i mean and when you that, tell yeah. somebody straight up and just let and they still do it it's because they want that's just the that's results that I they mean. want. And it just helps to be honest up front. Oh, yeah. And it's hard, but it's easy on everybody in advance. Sometimes people just that. appreciate your honesty, and sometimes they want to be upset. But in sometimes the end... people don't understand clues. I mean, you have yeah, to be... You exactly. Know, I mean, we had a neighbor that would stop, but, but very uh, sp sporadically, you mm -hmm. know, and usually for holidays. And if I was in the middle of something, I'd say, oh, I'd love to invite you in, but I'm just, you know, we're mm -hmm. on our way out or we're doing, or I go to the, di or go to the door with a dish towel in my hand or something, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if you, not to make a prop, but if you're doing something, you're doing yeah. something. Well, if a person comes over sporadically, I'll Yeah, well, I mean, sometimes it is bad time. <laughs> we're going to be back in just a moment. What's more mother knows best? Stay with us. Welcome back to Good Day and Mother Knows Best. Christmas is uh, less than a week away now. Yeah. And it's right around the corner. What are you doing to prepare right now? Maybe you have family coming in, or you're just trying to treasure the moments leading up, shopping. What's your advice? 
Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, I'm working hard to treasure the moments. And that might sound like an oxymoron, but, you know, I just started Christmas shopping yesterday. Yeah. So I'm a little stressed, you know, <laughs> about it. But I realized that, you know, it, it's going to be here before I know it. I'll live mm -hmm. through it. And I don't want my kids to remember, oh, yeah, that's the Christmas that Mom wants to listen to because she's walking, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, we're doing that. Plus, this is my first year. You know, we were talking earlier about starting new traditions. Mm -hmm. I have a married son now, and this is their first Christmas. Married? No, it's not their second, but it's the first Christmas we'll be together. And um, so they're coming out early before Christmas, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to learn how to balance that, our family, their family, mm -hmm. and not be greedy and so want them nice. all the time. <laughs> yeah. And you had some advice, too. Well, because our kids are all in different states, and mm -hmm. so they won't be here for Christmas. So we're making new traditions. Mm -hmm. We're picking up our niece, and we're going to go looking at Christmas lights Friday night. Mm -hmm. And then on Christmas Eve, we're getting a group of friends together, mm -hmm. and we're going to see a funny movie. Wow, and that's good. Just kind of doing things that are different that we didn't do before, mm -hmm. so we won't it won't seem so sad that we're not doing yeah. the things we always do. We're making new traditions. That's, that's some good, good advice. Good way to look at it. Yep, I've got to refer back to my list. It's down to the wire. My sister called me this morning about the, the Christmas dinner list and so mm -hmm. forth. And so we're going home to Alabama this year for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking forward to that, being home with my mama and my daddy and, and cooking with my mama. And, and nice. of course, taking lots of pictures this year and just being with family and just relaxing. I'm down to the wire with the Christmas shopping. I don't have that much to do this year. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> um, but so far, it's just all about making memories mm -hmm. and just enjoying my family. Mm -hmm. I have my niece and nephew with me mm -hmm. and just enjoying family and just not stressing, not making right. it commercial, but making it what it was meant to be about, mm -hmm. just about yep. love. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are some ways that you ha really are able to kind of focus on the things that are going on and, and not, you know, going ballistic this Christmas, <laughs> as you said that. I just really, really scaled down. Mm -hmm. I didn't even put all of my boxes of decorations out mm -hmm. because I got tired at a certain point. I said, you know, I don't need to have every room full of decorations. It looks good. I, I'm going to allow myself not to feel like I have to put up every mm -hmm. box of decorations and just we're not doing a whole lot of presents and just really focusing on the people that are in my life that I love and what can I do with them. And instead of, like with my friends, instead of giving each other gifts, we're making it a point to go have a lunch or, nice. you know, to do something mm -hmm. together. The gifts of time, they're going to mm -hmm. remember that, yeah. 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 We're scaling down, too. I mean, we, we, you know, lugged all the boxes down of decorations. And once we got the tree up, I looked around and I thought, you know, it, it's in the, a room that we, we spend a lot of time in. I thought, we don't need to decorate the whole rest mm -hmm. of the house that we're hardly <laughs> in. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really nice. It's just kind of taking the elephant off my chest, mm -hmm. you know, that we have to decorate the whole I used to have a tree in every room. My oh, wow. did you? Wow. Yeah, I was, I Although was I love person. that, but yeah, you were that person. Oh, that person. Well, I put up every last one. I did. I put up every last one of my decorations, but this year I did something different. Candles. I got into mm -hmm. all of the candles with the Christmas scents. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. one thing Travis, he was doing, I found the, the, the cinnamon Christmas bun candles. Oh. And every day when Travis would come home <laughs> from work, he's been loving the Christmas scents that's been Aww. going through the house. Mm -hmm. Just the smell of Christmas. Mm -hmm. So that's my new thing that I'm adding to my Christmas list. That's neat. It's just the smell of Christmas I throughout the house. <clears throat> Excuse me, with wax, you know, the wax burners. Uh -huh. So it doesn't have a flame. It's oh. just melting wax. And yeah, I got to get wax. into that. But yeah, yeah the, just the smell of Christmas throughout the house. Mm -hmm. And my kids, they have fell in love with the hot cocoa. So I bought this big, huge tub <laughs> yeah, of cocoa. And so this weekend, we're going to sit around the Christmas tree. We were talking about that. We're going to sit around the Christmas tree and tell Christmas stories and drink oh. cocoa. So I'm looking yep. forward to that this weekend when they get out of school for yeah. the holidays. That's great. That is yeah. so sweet. Well, mm -hmm. any advice on Christmas shopping and how to pick the thoughtful gift for someone in your life? Well, mm. I, I, for my teenage grandsons this year, normally I'll go get them a shirt at one of the, you know, stores that start with A that <laughs> teenagers <laughs> like. And there's a couple of them, actually. <laughs> um, but this year, there's actually a charity I support that prevents um, teenage suicide. Mm. And I brought them shirts from there. Oh, and it's wow. called To Write Love on Her Arms. And they're oh, really neat right. shirts, and it will engage conversation. So I'm getting them a present, but I'm also donating Ooh, to a charity. Oh, and starting a good conversation with them. That's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for that advice. That's yeah, some really that's good thoughts. We're going to be back in the morning at 5 a.m. You can find out more about Mother Knows Best on MySouthWestGA.com.